before you begin to braise, uh, prepping your pipe is and um, your fittings is one of the most important things to make sure you have a successful brazing experience and no leaks. If you have any type of dirt, corrosion, or residue on your uh, refrigeration piping or fittings, you're going to have a uh, difficult time getting that braze to hold. So one of the first tips, you don't have to do this, but uh, this is what I do to make it a little bit easier. If you have your piece of pipe that you're getting ready to braise in, I will usually clean it off with the sand cloth or, or, or the uh, mesh type cloth. And you can see there's some cor uh, corrosion going on here, discoloration. So what I'll do is I'll mark where I want to have the, uh, where I'm going to cut the pipe. And I will clean it at the point where I'm going to make the cut. It's much easier to clean it somewhere a few inches down below the end of the pipe than it is trying to clean the pipe after you cut it. it, it you can do it, but it's just a little bit easier for me. I'll, I'll clean it before I cut it. And um, that way you don't risk getting any of the uh, sand or residue down inside of the pipe. So you're going to want to prep your, your pipe and make sure you don't have any spots like you see right here because that uh, will not let the sill floss adhere to the and bond with the copper. The other thing is make sure that you have all of the residue from the from the cleaning off all the sand and all the bits and pieces that that are on the pipe. That also hinders your uh, brazing ability. Now once you have your pipe cut, that cutting wheel applies some pressure downwards and you end up with these little burrs and a tiny lip right inside this pipe. Now you know from module three that if you have a restriction it drops the pressure of your refrigerant. Now this is not a very big restriction but it is somewhat of a restriction. This in and of itself isn't going to cause a problem for you but imagine if there are 10 or 15 of these in, a, in, in the line sets going from the condensing unit to the air handler uh, you're going to have tiny little pressure drops that begins to affect the performance of the system. So you're going to take your deburring tool, tool and begin to deburr and take away this lip by cutting cutting it out. The deburring tool has got a little swivel and a cutting edge right here and it will begin to take that tiny little lip off of the pipe and take all the little burrs off. And then you're going to do this until you have no more lip on the inside that you can feel with your finger. One of the things if you just have a piece of pipe that you're prepping that's open on both ends, you, you don't have to pay attention to where all those shavings go. But if you are working on a system where it's only one end of the pipe that you're working on and the pipe is in an upwards position and you start to deburr, all of those shavings are going to fall back down inside of the pipe. It's going to cause you problems in the future. So it's best if you get your vacuum or if you can get the pipe in a downward position like this when you do the deburring so it falls out. Or if you're up in this direction, you put, you'll hold your vacuum up here close to suck any of those pieces that come out. So you get that completely deburred and your pipe completely clean making again making sure there's no spots like this one right here to cause that uh, sill floss not to flow in it here. And then you're also going to take your fittings and if they've been in your truck for a while or even if you get them straight from the supply house they're going to have some oil on them so you're going to want to clean the outside of the fittings You do have some uh, brazing material that that will adhere to the outside and then you'll roll up your sand cloth or the, your mesh cleaning cloth and clean the inside of your fitting so that you have a nice shiny copper look to it. Making sure you wipe off all the residue and you don't have any uh, bits and pieces inside. And then you'll go ahead and fit your, your pieces together and you're ready to brace. Here's one last tip. When you have your refrigeration fittings, especially the 3 8 elbows, 
you need to keep those in a drawer or in your truck or in a bag only with other refrigeration fittings and I'm going to tell you why. Um, this was a problem I ran into on a new construction home. Customer couldn't figure out what was going on. It took quite a while for me to figure out it as well. What happens if you keep your uh, 3 8 inch elbows in a drawer with your quarter inch zip screws eventually one of those one of those uh, screws is going to fall down inside of the 90 and it fits perfectly inside that 90 and if you're not paying attention and it doesn't come out when you stick your 3 8 inch refrigeration tubing in here you can braise that screw right into the piping and what happened in my case and what I found was there were two 90s that were several feet apart and this screw when it would be in the cooling mode would slide down the 3 8 inch pipe to the 190 clunk and then restrict flow you put it in the heating mode it would flow the other way until it hit this 90 and it would clunk and you could feel it and hear it it was just finding out where it was so remember do not keep your uh, screws in the same drawer as your refrigeration fittings because one day this will happen and it's going to be a bear to figure it out.